blessing to you. Come on in on tonight. We are going to flow without fail or delay. God bless you all. Thank you for coming on. Who we all got on on tonight? Sister Tori, Sister Candy. A couple of y'all coming in. Don't forget to share, swipe, and invite. Swipe and invite it, man. God bless you. Good to see you. Doing well. Doing well. God is faithful. And God's getting ready to move not by power, nor by might, but by his spirit. Hello on the replay. For those of you coming in, God bless you all. Brother Travis Miller here. We do here at High Rooms Ministries. And we do a thing called Midnight Cry Monday through Friday. Just flowing without fail or delay. Man, I got a word for y'all on tonight. Good to see you all back on starting off the week with an awesome word. Amen. And we thank God uh, for allowing us to release a word on tonight, for allowing me to release a word for the people. I believe that there's a word for somebody on tonight. And I believe there's a miracle with your name on it. Amen. In this season. Amen. Stay connected to God. Do not waver. Somebody be patient in this season. Even when things look good, when it looks good, make sure it's God. Begin to wait on God. Say, God, order my steps. The word of God says the steps of a good man, they're ordered by the Lord. So if you get in God, he's going to order your step. So let's make sure we remain patient in this season. I know you're looking at deadlines. You're looking for God to move. You're looking for the manifestation. Many of you just got prophetic words that's been spoken over your life. And you're saying, man, if God, I received the prophetic word, but it looks like it's going opposite of what God spoke to me. Like, I know God spoke in what God said he was going to do. I know God said he was going to bless me. I know God said he was going to save my children, that he was going to turn the situation around. But why is it going opposite of what God spoke to me? Who, who am I talking to on tonight? I know I'm not the only one who has received the word and you're just getting impatient. Like, God, I'm getting impatient. I'm getting ready to get in my flesh. And that's what's happened. When you get impatient, you jumped in your flesh. So now you couldn't wait on God. You say, God, I'm looking for you to move and I'm looking for you to open the doors. But God, I'm getting impatient. So I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to go my way. Like I'm, I'm not, listen, I'm not even going to take counsel. I'm going to do it my way. I'm not, I'm not going to pray about it. That's dangerous when you just step out and go before God. That's dangerous. So whoever that's for on tonight, learn to be impatient. I know the money looks good. The opportunity looks good. It looks good. I mean, it's enticing. And that's what the, that's a trick of the enemy. He will set things up and make it look good. He'll make it look appealing so you can go to it. It's just like food. You know how you see stuff on uh, commercials and you see Burger King commercials and McDonald's commercials. And then you see the burger on TV. And you, get, you get that thing in person. That does not look like what it looked like on TV. Wow, wait a minute. These boogers and advertised this thing, made it look good, made it look like the cheese was running over. They prepped this thing up for TV. They prepped it up. So this for somebody. It looks good. You know what I mean? It looks enticing. But beloved, when you get that thing, it may not be the real deal. So be impatient and wait on God. So, I, I mean, I learned that when I come on, I flow and I teach and I minister through the anointing that... There's not a word that I speak. I know many of y'all think I just be talking, but there's not a word that I speak that's not for somebody. There's a word for you. You just have to get in the spirit and receive it. There's no point in being offended about everything. Aren't you tired of being offended? You always in your flesh. Everybody's wrong and you're right about things. He learned to take counsel and take heed to what the spirit of the Lord is saying in this season. A beloved, I had a word on tonight. And I'm going to put the title up later. Um, I just titled it. I put Midnight Cry because, you know, this is what this is. So we're going to flow. Uh, I see the numbers are small on tonight. But God say, listen, where there's two or three gathered in my name, there I'll be in the midst. Come on, somebody. So I believe God going to move on this scope. And like I said, I believe God has a word and a miracle with your name on it. And I got this revelation last week. And... I'm a minister by title. It's called The Cursed Name. 
the cursed name. And I know many people, when they think about curses, they think about witchcraft, they think about sorcery, hoodoo, voodoo. You know, so I understand that, but I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting ready to give you a different perspective on this on tonight about the curse name, amen. So just pay attention to the wisdom and the revelation of God on tonight. As I minister this word, I want to come to you by scripture just to kind of build up this foundation on where I'm at with this word on tonight. Go with me really quick if you have your Bibles. If not, just follow me and listen to the Holy Ghost on tonight. Go with me to Romans chapter 12. And I'm going to start by verse number 14, Romans 12 and verse number 14. If somebody, if you can, please put it on the screen for me, man. Romans chapter 12, verse number 14, he says, now bless them which persecute you. And he watched this. He says, bless and curse not. So in other words, Sister Lee, you know how you can bless somebody. I'm not talking about just blessing them with material things and I'm blessing you to, to get your hair done. I'm blessing you with food in your refrigerator. I'm blessing you with, with money to help it meet your needs. I'm not talking about that kind of bless, but I'm also talking about blessing with your words. The word of God says, these words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So wait a minute, these words I can speak, they can be a spirit. So watch the revelation on tonight. Now, the word of God also tells us that there's power in death in the life of the tongue. So that means that we can do some damage by what we speak. He says, now I want you to bless and curse not. Let me read this scripture one more time. Verse 14, he says, bless them which persecute you and bless and curse not. So I want you to bless them. I don't want you putting curses on them. Like I know they lying on you, talking about you, backstabbing you, cheating on you, uh, sending sabotage, doing stuff against you. Like I understand what they're doing, but listen, I want you to bless them. They persecute you for uh, persecute you for preaching this word. They persecute you for the word and revelation you got. They persecute you for you living holy and going to church and, and living right. They persecuting you, right? The word of God goes back to saying those who sh uh, who live godly shall suffer persecution. So there's that word persecution. There's another persecution. There's another side. Now we can live holy and walk upright, but you have to understand the persecution is coming. Here comes the agnostics. Here comes the, the non-believers and so forth, right? So it said, listen, I want you to bless and curse not. There's a reason because you can bless and you can curse a thing. This is exactly what he was saying. You can bless something, now you can also curse it. This is why you got to be careful. Watch this, building up the foundation, just flowing. And because I got this revelation, let me show you this. I got this revelation, I was at, I was at work and I was in my station and uh, I work like, it's like a... It's like a salad dessert station and you got other dishes, but it's like a mainly a salad. People eat a lot of salads and they put stuff on it, right? So there was a piece of lettuce that fell on the floor. And one of my coworkers, she was just playing around with me. She's like, Travis, look, you done made a mess. She said, Travis, this is the travesty. I said, wait a minute, this booger said travesty. So then it hit me. Wow. So the word travesty stands for something tragic to happen. And I looked at my name. My name is Travis. So many of you don't know that. Uh, my name is Travis, right? So I look, I said, wait a minute. Travis is short for travesty. And then it hit me and it fell on my spirit. The cursed name. So I'm like, wait a minute. My name is basically cursed. Because there's, there's something else that's attached to it. So I looked at the revelation and then it just started flowing from there. I'm like, wait a minute. She said travesty. Wait a minute. That's my name is short. Travis is short for travesty. So I just grabbed that real quick revelation and I went in the word. Wait a minute. That's a cursed name. So I started flowing from there. I said, wait a minute. How many of us got cursed names? There's stuff up on us. There's stuff up on our names. There's stuff that people are speaking against. They're speaking death. They're speaking life. You might have been speaking travesty over me, but I bind that in Jesus' name. Wait wait a minute. There ain't going to be no travesty. I'm going to be full of that anointing, full of that glory. There ain't going to be no mistakes. There ain't going to be too many setbacks. I'm not going to be running into tragic ends and, and having to try to meet deadlines and barely able to make it. No, ain't no travesty over here. 
ain't no Travis deal here. So I looked at that and I seen the revelation, Sister Tisha, and I grabbed that thing as quick as I said, as quick as I could, and I said, wait a minute. That's a cursed name. Now what I'm and I went back and I got this word and watch how I show you this. Many of y'all gonna look at this and say, wow, the revelation gonna tie in. Go with me really quick, first Samuel chapter four. First, uh, first Samuel chapter four, verse number of uh, chapter four. Verse number 21, first, uh, first Samuel chapter 4, verse number 21, he says, start going me to 20, as a matter of fact. First Samuel chapter 4, verse number 20, Sister Dawkins. He says, and about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, fear not. He says, for thou hast born a son. Now, wait a minute. Let me, let me break this thing down and show you what was happening. So we had a man named Eli. And then he had a son named Phanias. And see, what happened is, for what their disobedience and the thing that they did and that Eli allowed them to do in the house of God and all of this and so forth. Many of you know the story. I'm just, you know, paraphrasing and give you a little bit. He had his son, but see, Phanias had ended up having a wife. This was Eli's son. He ended up have she ended up having a uh, he ended up having a wife and she bore a child. So wait a minute, there was a child that came out of this from after the situation after Eli had died and after Phanias had died, he still had a wife and there was an unborn. So watch this, and it stood by her and said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. He says, but she answered not, neither did she regard other words, lest she wasn't listening to it. I got man, I just lost my husband. I just lost my father-in-law. They just killed them. I mean, she, this lady was depressed. The fact that what just took place in Israel, and he says, and she named and she named the child Ichabod. She named this child Ichabod, saying, "The glory is departed from Israel, before the ark of God was taken because of her father-in-law and her husband." So now, because of that gone, the glory is gone, and now I'm gonna name my son Ichabod. Curse that child. Curse them. It's about a curse name. And I and I'm not mind the key. I looked at this and I said, God, you know what? Break the mind see cop. God break the curse off my name. God break the curse off my name. God break Kamasto. God break these familiar spirits. That's been in me since I was a child. Break the familiar spirits from my father's house. Break the familiar spirits from my wife's house. Break the familiar the familiar spirits from down in my bloodline that I didn't know was there. So father was a draw. Now there's, now there's a spirit up on me that I want to be a draw. Wait a minute. There's a spirit up on me that I want to drink. I don't even drink. Mother smoked marijuana. Mother had a good time. Wait a minute. There's a there's a spirit up on me that wanted to smoke and, and, and fornicate and club. Wait a minute. There, there's some there's some things you know that that's moving through our bloodline. There's some see we don't you know that generations can be cursed. Generations can be cursed. This this lady turned around and named her son Ichabod, and she cursed his name. Ichabod is the glory, me and she said meaning the glory that departed from Israel, departed from her husband, departed from her father-in-law. So she decided to curse this child. With that name, didn't regard her, didn't even care about the son when she had him, only because of what just took place, and she cursed that name. And see, beloved, this is why I don't mind still say I get to the place, I say, God, break every curse that's been spoken over my name. Break every curse that's been spoken over my family. God loose and liberate. So we talk about we talk about witchcraft, and we know that. There's power in witchcraft because God created it. God created all things. God created evil. He created good. God created that stuff. So we know that there's a power in witchcraft. We understand that. And see, but beloved, we have to get to a place that we break the curses in our bloodline. There's some bloodline. So if he went back to told Abraham, Abraham, I bless thy seed seed. So he going to bless thy seed seed. Wait a minute. So if, if a seed can be blessed, guess what else they can, he can do? He can also curse a generation. Don't you know the word of God talks about I'll, I'll visit your iniquities until the third and fourth generation. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me because of what I did, 
because of my disobedience. He can visit the iniquities because of me, because of my sin for the third and fourth generations. My children's children can be cursed because of what I brought into my life. My children can be burst, uh, can be cursed for uh, having babies out of wedlock. This stuff, many of us just don't understand. The word of God is your end sample. The word of God is your example. The word of God is a lamp until our feet, a light until our path. The inches of the word bring it light. So this word talks about so much. Let's go back to what he was saying in the scripture. I want you to bless and curse not. I don't want you to curse them. I want you to bless those that persecute you. Even in the midst of them, when they talked about you, I want you to bless because there's some things that you can do. You can also curse these people. You can curse people and don't even know it. You can curse people by the things speaking over your life. And what most of us doing, we curse ourselves. You can curse yourself by the thing you come out of your, out of your mouth. I'm not going to make it. Yeah, you're not going to make it now because you just cursed yourself. That's the same reason why he told us power and death is in the life of the tongue. La man de bebe si. You have the authority to speak your blessing. You have the authority to speak your healing. You, have, you can say, God, I'm coming out of this situation. You can activate your blessings by just speaking a thing. Receive it on tonight. So I'm going back to this revelation. How I realized and I grasped it. Wait a minute, there can be curses up on our names. This is why you got to be careful what you name your children. You got to be careful what you name your children. That one, that little small revelation. That small revelation. Wait a minute. Travesty is attached to Travis. God, break everything attached to our names. Break everything. God, I must God, God, send generation, uh, generational blessings. Break the generational curses. Break the curses off our name. God, go down into our generations. God bless our generations. Break the curses for generations to come. This is why, beloved, we have to be careful. Yeah, we got to be careful what we name our children. What you speaking over your children. You're going to be just like your father. You're going to be just like your mother. You just, you're going to be just like your people on your side, of, on that side of the family. Not knowing you speaking curses. This serious on tonight. You speak a curse over your child. You ain't never going to make it. You ain't never going to be nothing. You ain't going to amount to say. You're never going to amount to nothing. Just like we have to break the curses that people have spoken over us. They speak stuff over our children. They speak stuff over our marriages. They speak stuff. They praying that you'll fail. Yeah, everybody ain't praying for you like P-R-A-Y-I-N. NG, they, they praying, they P-R-E-Y-I-N-G. They praying. They praying on your downfall. You understand? They pray that you don't get up. They pray that you won't be successful. They trying to sabotage. Somebody, you dodged the attack. You dodged the attack. They plotted on you. They plotted to do stuff to you. But guess what? Your discernment kicked in. And that's why the attack wasn't, wasn't prevail. The attack didn't prevail just because your discernment, just because you had God. Receive that. Receive that for somebody. That's just a sign. The attack didn't prevail. Some of you, you're getting ready to be faced with opposition, faced with attacks. But it's not going to prevail. God going to prevail. God going to give you a spirit of discernment. You're going to be able to discern this stuff. You're going to be able to discern the attacks of the enemy. Many of you are going to get eyes to see this stuff before it even comes. God ain't going to let you let it come off guard. Let it come off guard. He ain't going to let you be caught with your works undone. I bind up the spirit of element of surprise. Element of surprise. Meaning the stuff ain't going to hit you by surprise. You're going to see it before it's coming. You're going to hear him speaking of curses. God going to give you dreams. He's going to show you them working witchcraft. He's going to show you them working voodoo, them talking in secrets. When you're not around, you step in a room, they're quiet. Say, come on, say, God, let me hear what was spoken in the atmosphere. 
God, let me hear in the spirit realm. Let me hear the plot of the Basto say. Let me hear the plot of the enemy. Give me eyes to see it. Give me ears to hear it. There's a reason why you pray. God, break the curses off our names on tonight. God, liberate and set us free. Break the curses off our children. They speak things against our children. They speak things against your husbands, your wives. So you're trying to understand why this stuff is going crazy. Why these different little spirits running in out your dreams and through your homes and stuff. People sent stuff out against you. They sent stuff out against you. They done sent stuff out against your ministry. Now you wonder why it's hard to flow every time you get the microphone. You wonder why people can't stay in the church. You wonder why it's confusion. Nothing but a bunch of witchcraft. People not mind those say, we got a bunch of blind witches and warlocks using witchcraft and don't even know it. And y'all know me, I ain't deep. I don't I don't go into all that, but it, it, it's true, man. We going like this word goes that way. It's about a curse thing. Break these curses tonight in Jesus' name. I just want to bless you. Catch the revelation. And I wasn't trying to make it deep and I wasn't trying to drag it out. Because we need to know this, beloved, there's curses up on our names. And we can tear that stuff down. I started getting to a place, I was praying. I said, God, what I want you to do, tear down every curse spoken against my name. I have been praying this prior months, Sister Dawkins, before this word on tonight. Break the curses up off my name. Break the curses that's been spoken. That Don't even let it attach to me. Don't even let nothing come close to me. God, dismantle every attack. And I come, I stay. God, put a fence around me. Put a fence around my family. Put a fence around my home, my cars. Everybody connected to it. Put a fence around those who eat off my tree. Just wanted to bless you. It's about a curse name. Receive it on tonight. And I pray this message really helped you and I pray it touched you. Because, beloved, simple revelation. Simple, simple revelation. Amen. God bless you all. Listen, I'll see you back on tomorrow night. If God say the same, we're going to flow with our fell on this week. And, you know, the enemy, he wants to try to get some of us to stop. He wants you to stop what you're doing. He wants you to stop being faithful. Stay connected to God in this season. Beloved, we're going to flow with our fellow delay. You know, I'm going to come on and give you a word. In spite of what I got going on, despite of anything. I'm going to come encourage you and give you revelation. And still, listen, I'm still flowing without fellow delay. Still here. Still playing in Sister Nicole. Still in a place with God. Looking for God to move. I need a spiritual blessing. I need a spiritual breakthrough. I need the heavens to be open. I need the latter rain. Begin to cry for the latter rain. We've had the early rain. But now it's time for the latter rain. Those trials you're going through, don't worry about the trial. Don't worry about the setback. God is getting ready to move concerning that. God is getting ready to perfect that which concern of you. And I know it looks good. I know it It looks bad. It look, it's crazy as it sounds. But all things are working together for your good. God is working this thing. God, listen, you stressing about it. The same thing you stressing about God done work this thing out already. You just can't see it yet. This is why you get in the spirit to see what God is getting ready to do in your life. Like I told somebody earlier, don't get impatient, begin to wait on God. Break the curse off your name. Tear down this stuff coming up against you. Say, God, give me eyes to see and ears to hear. In Jesus' name. Listen, you be blessed. I love you. You need more information. It's all on the profile. Given this season, if this word has been a blessing to you, if the midnight cry, the ministry has been a blessing to you, I ask you to give on tonight, amen. And it'd be greatly appreciated. If you need more information, it's on the profile. And you can also email me by prophet Travis Miller at gmail.com, amen. God bless you. Good night.